cost. How much it cost? It cost Jesus his life. It did. Well, Jesus paid it all. I ain't got to do nothing. All I got to do is believe. I don't think we understand what true belief is. But we're going to talk about and we're going to let the scriptures teach us tonight. We're going to let the scriptures teach tonight. How about that? And we're going to go through some scriptures and I hope they bless you. And we're going to look at the opening scripture, Matthew 5. Let's read. Let's go to all of them. Let's go to one and then we'll read them and see how these things tie in. God know what he's doing. I, I don't lived long enough to know that if I stay with God, it, it, and I like what Paul said, it looked like we're sheep counting for the slaughter. We look, we look like we're going down. Uh -uh. We may look like we're sheep headed for despair and slaughter. Uh -uh. No, no, no. God let Pharaoh down by the Red Sea. The children is told him to go down there so it appeared that you trapped. He didn't tell them that. God knows what he's doing. All right, Matthew 5, and we'll start at 1, and we're going to end up at verse 6. Let's pay attention. Hold on. Let me get this back. This thing uh, went back to uh, acting up here. Let me know when it's straight. Is it straight? I better look at it then. I'm turning it wrong, standing wrong. got to rewire this whole thing. All right, here we go. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. When he was seated, his disciples came to him. They began, then he began to teach them, saying, Bless, spiritual, prosperous. This is what he's talking about. You're blessed. That don't mean stuff. Uh-uh, you empowered. You're going to be empowered if you change your attitude. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 blessed means spiritually uh, empowered to prosper. Spiritually prosper. See that? That means you, what God is offering you, a different mindset to help you live above your circumstance. Your altitude determines your attitude. And this is what he's dealing with, these bad attitudes. Okay? They saw Jesus do a lot of great works, didn't he? He healed the sick. He was doing a lot of works, and they said, oh, we got somebody here. We can follow. We ain't got to hit a lick. We, we, we got it made. And Jesus was letting them know <laughs> to be happy to be admired of the poor in spirit, those devoid of spiritual arrogance. Okay, We ain't done nothing. What we lifted up in pride about? Well, I know more scriptures than you, but how many can you live? It ain't about how many scriptures you know. How many do you believe and how many can you put in practice in your life? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Look at what the humble get. You get to inherit the kingdom of heaven both now and forever. You got access to heaven right now. Amen. Remember the brother that prayed with himself? Who went on justified? Uh-huh. He didn't have access to heaven, did he? Pray and get through. Blessed for blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace. Look, the ones who, those who are mourned over their sins and repent for they will be confident when the burden of sin is lifted. Because David, David was messed up. But when God lifted that thing off of him, look, who is, who is crying over they messed up? I want to stop it. I can't, Lord, help me. You're crying. You're up late at night because the sin is overtaking you. Now you're crying out for God, God coming to get you. He's going to get you out. But you too many saints, oh, ain't nothing wrong with it. God said we can do this. It, shoot, ain't nothing wrong with you try it out before, before you marry. Don't you try on shoes? Carry before you marry. Didn't Jesus say it's better to, uh, Paul says it's better to marry than to burn? But no, we, we don't know if it's going to work out. You a believer, eh? Yeah, I believe in God, but let's do what he said. Amen? Listen. Blessed, inwardly peaceful. Look at this. Spiritual secure. 
worthy of respect are the gentle, the kind-hearted, sweet-spirited, self-control. You see, when you when you bless, you're inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, and because you know how to look, be kind, you're gentle-hearted and sweet-spirited. You can in it, see every every believer needs to be here so you can control. You can control that flesh, self-control. Because you're sweet spirit, you're kind, you're gentle. You can handle that because you're letting the Holy Spirit produce these kind of attributes. This is the attributes of God. You can hold me, Lord. He ain't been to hold you. You better learn how to control that. For they will inherit the earth. Wow. That means you benefit from the things in the earth. God will bless you to enjoy things on the earth here, now, and later on. Boy, that's a blessing right there. Listen. Six, bless, joyful. See how this stuff come together? Nourished by God's goodness. Nourish? Whoa, we going there. Nourish by God's goodness are those who hunger, have a godly hunger and a godly thirst for righteousness. Who is our righteousness? Yeah, Christ is our right. Those who actively, let, let me ask you something. I'm seeking. You see any action? You see me got putting forth any action? I'm just looking. I'm seeking. What my blessing? Don't seem like I'm putting forth much effort, do it? Uh huh. Uh huh. You got to put forth some effort into this. Those who actively seek right standing with God. Let's break this down. For when you seek right standing with God, you seek right standing with your people who are in authority over you. Husbands seek right standing with God. They seek right standing with their, with their husband, with their family, with, with the neighbors, with everybody. You don't say, I'm right with God, and you can't get along with it. You lying. That's a lie. Don't buy that. Oh, God understands me. He know how I am. He know how you are, but he's not approving of that behavior because Jesus left us an example. Did he not? So, look, look right here. For they will be completely satisfied. Now, let me tell you something. You, if you've ever been satisfied in God, in Christ, with God, and you end up being dissatisfied, you done left. You done, you done, left, you done left God. Why? You ain't satisfied no more. If something ain't right with that. So, let, let, let's do some scripture teaching here. I'm going to read the thought. The cause of discipleship, we got to adjust that attitude. The Holy Spirit will help you. Let me say this. I hadn't been too saved, hadn't got saved that long. The church I was attending, they had a revival. And I came in and I was sitting right on this side where my wife was sitting right here, past. And I'm sitting tall in the seat. Service hadn't started yet. I'm sitting there just ready for the word. Holy Spirit said, you lift it up in pride. I'm like, huh? He said, humble yourself. Now, to my defense, which I had none, because God had spoke, I thought I was just glad to be saved. God called it out. I was lifted up in pride. I slid all the way down in that seat. And I said, okay, Lord. I, 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 now, some things I did argue with God about but I trusted him. I said, okay, he, he know what he's talking about. And it hurts me the way I saw me. I look back over my life, saw where I was obeying God. And then I saw when he told me to do this, I didn't trust him. I done been there, y'all. Right, so it paid, I paid for a lot of things that I'm still hurt by when I look at my relationship with God, that I didn't have to learn that lesson that way. All I had to do was listen. So. The, the pastor got up, church started and everything, and that man went to preaching, and I enjoy. I still remember, if you unpacked, that was his sermon, you better pack back up, because you're going to have to leave here. This ain't your home. And I ran into that pastor somewhere. We, It was at a funeral. And I said, Pastor Knight, how you doing? I said, I was there that night. Y'all still remember that sermon? I was just got saved. And he looked, I said, Thank God for that, but I didn't go into detail with him, but I still remember that message. Let's, 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 let's look. Look at this. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The 
foundational requirements for all godly living. Uh, the, the foundational. This is what you got to be a part of your foundation. And it's a requirement for all godly living. If you want to live godly. is the hunger and thirst after righteousness. Wow. Wow. Okay. Let's look at let's 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 cross reference here. Oh, uh, I'm 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 caught between two opinions. I go to John six. Let's go to John six. John six. John six. Gospel John six. Gospel John six. This is Jesus. Let's see. We'll do. Let's do 33 through 35, and we're going to skip around in this chapter because I want to pull some stuff out of here, okay? Uh-huh. For the bread, God, the bread of God is he who comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. You hear me? Then they said to him, Lord, Always give us this bread. Whoa, we're talking about hungry now. Watch this. Jesus replied to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never be hungry, and the one who believes in me as Savior will never be thirsty. Now, like I said, if you ain't thirsty for godly things no more, and if you ain't hungry for godly things, you done left God. And now, okay, I know you can get this. You see how dark this is right here? It ain't dark like it, like it was when I first got. How, how transparent is this? This is righteousness. This is darkness. When you leave being hungry, when you walk away from God and you're no longer hungry for purity, for righteousness, then you go back to that old nature and then you start craving that old stinking stuff that Satan, after Adam and Eve sinned, put that stinking nature, then they start craving stinking stuff, rotten stuff. Yeah, worldly, because it's stinking sin, stinks in the night. That's why I'm going with that. So you used to crave this. We came to Jesus, didn't we? And then he, let's go back to what he said. He put this holy righteousness in us. Jesus replied to them, I am the bread of life. The one who come to me will never be hungry. And the one who believes in me as Savior will never be thirsty for the one. That one will be sustained spiritually. He going to feel that spot. Now, I, I remember when I was here, I ate and drunk much of this stinking world lane. I keep calling because you know, you saw me in my hellish days. Do you see any signs of that stinking joker? Do you see any signs of him? I crave this. Now, this will try to come up, but when he come up, you ever seen them things, them oxygen air holes where people had them things on in the hospital? I crimped my air hole. I crimped the air hole. You ain't getting light back on me because if I go back the way I was, ain't no help for me. Why we won't crimp the air holes on that joke when this go to when we go to feeling like, oh, I just got to tell them something. Tell them about Jesus. <laughs> if you're going to tell them something, tell them about how much he loves you. Tell them about how he died for you. Tell them about he, he is your bread. He is your water. He is your everything. I'm telling you. The smartest thing I ever did was accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I had help. He pointed him out. Second thing, accepting the ministry that I didn't want. <laughs> I didn't want to preach. Thirdly, marrying, getting married again, and I didn't want to get married. He, he, he guided me. He gave me that desire to do it. Then when I did that, it helped me to go ahead on and receive the ministry in its entirety. 
I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing. I didn't know it was going to do that. I thought I was okay. But my heart wasn't, wasn't, wasn't sold out on preaching. All them years I preached, I just got, just really received it, Lily. Now, that, that, that ought to tell you something. I love God enough to do it, but I just made peace with it, Bernadine. Some of us ain't made peace with who we are in Christ. Some of us ain't made peace with this holy and righteous life. This is where God want us, right over here. He don't want that old stinking man. I got an airline back there. I forgot to bring it out. When this go to coming back up, you leave in the bread. Jesus said, man, should not live by bread alone, but by ever. Was Jesus hungry? Was he hungry? Was he hungry? Did he have a desire? Hold on. Hold on, Let, let's, let's get here. Give me uh, 1 Peter 2 and 2. And then we're going to Philippians 2 and 13. 1 Peter 2 and 2, because we're lining this thing up. So, I cherish the dark life. I cherish that old sinful life. Rowdy living, having fun. One I didn't spare no expense. I used to tell, you remember Calvin Jefferson? All them guys, I don't come around here because if you fall out, I ain't responsible for your well-being. Because if you can't handle a big old bag, don't come around here because we, we going to smoke it out. That, that, I'm just telling you. That, that's how I was. Wasn't no shame in my game. When I got saved, wasn't no shame in my game. I talked about Jesus to whoever would listen. I had a desire to do right. And still, I don't have to fight that desire. I welcome that desire that energize and create. Let, watch this. Now look at Jesus. Look at Paul. Look at the Holy Spirit. Like newborn baby. Haven't we come to Christ as, as Savior? Didn't we receive Jesus? All who come to me, you will never be home. Now, you got a new desire. You got a right nature in you. This newborn baby, Mecca baby, craves milk. Tell me she don't. God put that desire in you to want the simplicity of his word. No way you can come to Jesus, where my thing at, and still want this. If he didn't come into your life, then you don't want that no more. When he came into my life, I had a tender heart. I was no longer as mean. I'm like, I want to help people now. I want to do right. I don't want to fight no more. I ain't want to do none of that. Because he came in. I had a new desire. Watch this. Like little newborn baby Christian, you should long for the pure milk of the word. Now, you might go in a church and get hungry because there ain't no pure milk going. It's a lot of sugar. What do you don't do nothing but put that much milk and put that much sugar in the bar? Ain't that what we got? We didn't get a lot of sincere milk. We didn't get the pure milk of the word and telling people what really salvation was. We didn't get that. I didn't. We got a lot of buffoonery. We got old cliches and wives. Tell. We didn't tell people the truth. But now you got God's, this, you got this spirit in you. And now you what? Look, like newborn baby, you should long. That's a craving for the pure milk of the word. So that by it, you may be nurtured. There go that word again. Nurtured, nourished, and grow in respect to salvation. It's ultimate fulfillment. And there's too many people ain't being fulfilled in their salvation. Some ain't right. Did you leave and go back to that old craving? That's a big difference, ain't it? That's a big difference. Big difference. Philippians 2 and 13. Let's move on. And we're going back to John 4. John 4. Uh, 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 yeah, John 4. After we get Philippians 2 and 13. No, we won't. We won't get uh, John 4. We're going to get Psalm 37 and 4. I need to highlight them scriptures. I had them all in a cluster because all when the Holy Spirit gave them to me, they all fell in place. How hungry are you? For it is not your strength. See there? But it is God who is effectively at work in you. Now that you're here, wait a minute. Where am I? This righteousness is at work in you. It ain't you. You can't have it. You done taste and seen that the Lord is good. You want more. You want more. Well, my mama bought a cheesecake, and I went digging off in there. I kept going. I ate the whole cheesecake. 
And my mama, to, to, to the day she died, she never let me forget I ate a tea cake. I done bought you a tea cake. And you steady think I got AIDS. I'm like, wow. I kept eating it. <laughs> same thing with God. I got hit with that love of God. I ain't been the same since. Listen, longing, longing. It says, for it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively his righteousness, his cravings inside of you, that spirit at work in you both to will, to want to do, and to work. That is strengthening, energizing you, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose. Why God put you here. So the Holy Spirit, if he see you going after him, he going to keep kindling that fire. He going to stir that thing up in you. And you ain't going to just be sitting there, oh, I'm saying, yeah, hey, just like it. No, you, you, you can't help it because it's the joy of the Lord in you. And you glad to be saved. And you want somebody else to, I want y'all to get and, and enjoy what I'm getting. But I can't make you want it. It's your choice. Did God start off with this? When he created Adam and Eve, what did he start off with this? What did he start off with? Adam and Eve chose what? They chose this. Well, I ain't do nothing but sin. Look what sin did to this earth. And you think sin ain't nothing to play with? Somebody died for that. Somebody died to get that desire, God's spirit back into you. Stuff ain't nothing to play with. So we, 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 we got to, here we go, right here. Psalm 37 and 4. Y'all read it. I'll be right back. <laughs> Y'all read that. Delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires. What the Holy Spirit, that verse lines up with that. He will, he will create that desire in you. If he see you are desiring him, if you hungry and thirst after him, he will give you. I had a person argue me now. That means God will give you a house if you want a house. That means what about living? right what about treating your neighbor right what about to stop lying if you desire to stop lying he can help you stop lying so watch this <laughs> here it is this your feeding tube right here this your feeding tube you're taking it in I had a nephew he couldn't eat, so he had to run that tube down his nose into his stomach. Now, what if Satan come and crimp your, crimp your tube? What you going to do? What you going to do? How you going to survive? How you going to survive? All right? So you, 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 your word is cut off. You done stopped craving the word, but now we're going back to this. going to get mean, you're going to get hateful. What you looking at? <laughs> Your mama. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm back over here in this stank spirit. Jairi, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to get you. So, y'all see that. Let's put it back up there. Desire. Delight yourself. How do you delight yourself in the Lord? And he will give you what brings you joy? Do, do, do being in a right relationship with God brings you joy? He will give you the desires and petition, that's prayers, because now you understand what the will of the Lord is. You praying for God's will to be done because you reading and studying the sincere milk of the word. Now you're creating a de righteous desires in you. Look, 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 look at five. Commit your way to the Lord. Wasn't he righteous? Trust also in him, and he will do it. Watch this. He that hung and thirst after righteousness, he will make your righteousness 
your pursuit of right standing. It is with God like light. Everybody going to know you going after God. Everybody was kind and didn't say nothing about your, your, your passion for, for, for Rome. They didn't want to say nothing. But we know that we was hungry for that. So let's get John 4, 13 through 15. Might have went to, should have went to John 31 and 34. We're going there. We're going to go to John 4, 31 and 34 too. Let's see what he said. Jesus answered her and said, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. Jesus said, Whoever drink this physical water is going to get thirsty again. The woman went to the well. We know the story. I ain't got time to get into a background. But she, Jesus said, Whoever drink this physical water going to thirst again. That's what he told that woman. All right? But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Somebody lied. Well, I don't understand why, why we can't desire this and desire that. Well, do we desire to see people born again? Do we desire, desire to see people maturing and growing? Do we desire those things? Do we want to see people get saved? Do we have a desire to be married to a godly woman or have a godly man? Or do we have a desire to be chili cheese fried, macaroni and cheese, baked potato, four for four, pronto pub, uh, what them things at the fair? Funnel cakes. Oh, I love me some funnel cakes. That ain't healthy. <laughs> what do we desire, y'all? It should be God because we been born again. All right, give me John 4 and 31. Hold on. You done moved? That's all right. Go on, go to John 4 and 31. All right. Meanwhile, the disciple was, was urging Jesus to have a meal. Y'all see this? Jesus sent them to town to buy victuals because... Jesus says the need that I go through Samaritan, the disciple were prejudiced, and he didn't want them going through there. He knew that woman was going to be at the well, and he sent them. So they done made it back by now. This is where we're picking up the story. Meanwhile, the disciple were urging Jesus to have a meal. What kind of meal were they urging Jesus to have? A physical meal. Saying, Rabbi, teacher, eat. But Jesus, he told them, I have food to eat that you know not about. You don't know about. So the disciples said one another, who has brought him something to eat? They think it's physical. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to completely finish his work. Jesus said, my, King James said, my nourishment is to do the will. You see how Jesus craved to do what the Father wants. Now, where are we at? We're supposed to be like Jesus. He left us an example. Well, Jesus didn't give me that, that car I wanted. I done prayed for a job. He won't even give me a job. I know plenty of sinners got jobs because they got skills. God give everybody talents and ability to go get a job. And they get a job. But I had a job, but I don't like where what I was doing. That's beneath me. They shouldn't be treating me like that. I'm nobody. You can treat me however you want to. God got a whole. See, when you're willing to go through adversity to God and you stay put where you at, God says, I can use them. I can stretch them a little bit further. So he's getting you prepared for more. You ain't going to get more by running from everything. You don't get more. God wants you in that heater, in that furnace. And, and, and seeing how long and how much can you take before you blow your fuse. Jesus was hungry and thirsty to do what God wanted him to do. Come on, let's keep reading here. It says, uh, do, uh, it says uh, do you not say that it's, it's, it's still four months until the harvest comes? Look, I say to you, rise your eyes. Raise your eyes and look. The fields at the fields. See, they are white for harvest. It wasn't even time for harvest. It was four months to harvest. But he said, it's ready. The people are ready to be 
delivered. They're ready to come in. He's talking about the people now. Are ready. All, listen, it says they are all white for harvest. Already the reapers are receiving his wages. Listen to what Jesus is saying now. And he is gathering fruit for eternal life so that he who plants and he who reap may rejoice together. For in this case, the saying is true. One person sold, another one reap. Apollo plant, Paul, what did he say? Apollo preached. Uh, uh, Paul preached, Apollo water, but God gave the increase. All right. Another, uh, one person sold, another one reap. I sent you to reap a crop for where you have not worked. Look at God. He said, I'm going to send you somewhere where you ain't sold nothing, but they read it. Now, that, that ought to tell us something right there. You ain't even got a witness. You just come and pull them out. They ready to be saved. And, and we got to understand. Why is this talking about that? We hungry for this. Jesus was. He's showing us what he is thirsty and hungry for here. I sent you to reap a crop which you have not worked. Others have worked and you have been privileged to reap the result of their work. Look at God. Look at God. Well, watch this. Now. Many Samaritan from that city believed in him, trusted in him as Savior because of what the woman said when she testified. He told me all things that I have done. Jesus told that woman some stuff that she had did. He didn't put her down. He just let her know he knew. For when the Samaritan came to Jesus, they asked him to remain with them. What? And he stayed there two days more. More, many more believed in him with a deep abiding trust because of his word, his personal message to them. Listen to what they told the woman who said, come see a man. And they told the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. For now we have heard them for ourselves. Don't believe me. You got to hear him for yourself. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the word. And you believe. But now you got to want to hear him and believe him for yourself. Hallelujah. You see that, Lord, that's blessing me right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's, let's look at uh, John 6. Let's go back to John 6, 26, 27. I'm almost there. I really am. So let me ask you something. What we cherish the most is what we hunger and thirst for the most. What you cherish more than you cherish God. Look, the word of God is the most valuable thing because the word is the living word. It's God and it's Jesus. It's all wrapped up in one. I feel the same way about the word as I do Jesus. I can't love Jesus and won't study. Oh, I love the Lord. Do you study? Well, I ain't got time. Oh, yeah, that don't work. How you going to value Jesus and not value the word equally? In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. The same was in the beginning, wasn't nothing made that was made, right? So the word and Jesus are synonymous. I love Jesus. He died for me. But you don't value the word as much? No, the word is what told me how to, how to live again. I got peace because of God's word. God spoke personally to me. That's why I know it's his word. And it brings comfort to me. Great things are here. You your wife in the church. He ain't lying. He's not lying. I, I can't put it in the car. I ain't going to let my little mind even try to figure that out. I'm just getting ready to receive it. <laughs> See, what, belong, what God revealed to me belongs to me and my children forever. But what he, what he didn't reveal, he didn't tell me what all it encompasses. So I'm going to let God remain God. I'm crazy enough to believe it. God also spoke to me one night, Friday night, leaving here. He said, when I get through with you, they're going to all know you want a man. I cut the radio down. I was shaking. I said, is that me talking to myself? I'm like, Lord, what are you saying? And it scared me. But I love God because I read the story. I love what he's doing with my life because it's not my life. You provide the fire. I give up. I'm the sacrifice. You provide the spirit, I'll open up inside. He done provided it. What's up? What's up? What's up? What, what, what you want? I want to all be patties. What you want? 
So you got a lifeline to each one of them. When, when I was a sinner, I had one of these. This is what I was about. I, I'm trying to hook up with people just like me. You got a black shirt on. I got, so this, I was looking for people that just like me. That's all who was around me. Everybody who came to that house to pick me up, I introduced them to my mama. My mama knew everybody that I hung with because I wanted her to meet them because in case I didn't make it home, she knew who I lived with. Now, if some people don't want their parents to meet nobody they hanging with, you crazy, and I'll say it. What kind of, what, what's wrong with y'all? And y'all trust people? Man, I'll run a background check so fast. You got to. A person with a, a black spirit that's connected to Satan is looking to hook up with everybody that got a black spirit. And them spirits find each other. But when it's righteousness, oh, when you write, your spirit going to seek out right. You, you ain't looking for that stinking stuff no more. So when you find yourself in a, in a group of people with that black spirit, what they tell you? You ought to look and say, I'm warming by the wrong fire. Like Peter. He out there. <laughs> I'll leave Peter. I won't beat him up because I did the same thing. I, I'd have done that. I was shame of him. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> All right, where I'm at. Let's get, uh, yep, 26, and we, yeah, and we're going to read to 28. All right, Jesus answered, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, you have been searching for me, not because you saw the signs, a testing miracle, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. You ain't, you ain't hungry for me. You want them fish sandwiches. <laughs> but God will bless you. God going to bless you. It's all right. It, it don't matter. God going to bless you. You ain't following him because you saw the miracles. I, wait a minute. I'm going to tell you something. I don't have to look a miracle outside of me. I can look in the mirror and know that Look at this miracle that God performed. If you can't look at your life and see that God performed a miracle in your life, because these people, oh, they're healing over there. They're running. I call them miracle mongers. You looking for a miracle. I'm, I look at me. I ain't got to go no further than me. And if you can't look at you and see a miracle, something wrong. Listen, Jesus told them. Did he play with them? He said, I'll show you most solemnly say to you, you have, you have been searching for me. Not because you saw the signs and the miracles, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. They ate that fish sandwich. That hot fish ain't nothing good. That like on a Friday when you see that hot fish on Friday. Mill Street has some good fish there. Mama, maybe you remember Mill Street? Woo, you can smell that fish all the way from, from that Mill Street all the way over there from Jackson Memorial where we used to live. That fish used to smell good. Come on, listen, listen. But because you ate the loaves, and will feel. Do not work for food that perish, but for the food that endures and lead to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For God the Father has authorized him, put his seal on him. And they asked him, what are we to do that we may habitually be doing the work of God? Jesus answered, this is the work of God that you believe or uh, hear trust in, rely on, and have faith in the one whom he sent. So they said to him, what sign? There they go again. Look, a, a miracle will you do that we may see and believe. See that? See what I'm talking about? They ate fish, didn't they eat the fish? They saw that and still don't believe. All right, listen. You, it said, what sign of the testimony will you do that we may see it and believe you? What supernatural work Will you do as proof? Look at your life. If you don't see no supernatural work in your life, then you know he ain't who he say he is. Or you don't want it. You want tangible. You want a deep freezer full. You want a closet full of clothes. You want a garage full of cars. You want a bank account full of money. But yet you empty. I'll take God's spirit any day. I'll take a peace of mind any day. Because if you seek first the kingdom, if you're hungry for the kingdom, you're going to go first. What you love the most is what you're doing. What are you hungry for every day is what you're going to go after. All right, come on. All right, our Father.
God, look at them. Look at these Pharisees. Now, they love to come at you. Our fathers they manna in the wilderness. As it is written in Scripture, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Let's watch Jesus. He's going to get them now. Then Jesus said to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, it is not Moses who gave you bread out of heaven. Moses didn't pull that miracle off. For the bread of God is he who come down out of heaven. Jesus is talking about himself now. And gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this bread. We're going to stop there and let's move on. We read the rest of that. We have already read. Psalm 42 uh, and 1 and 2. Psalms 42, Psalms 42, verse 1 and 2. Let's get these through scriptures and I'm about through. Sin left a void, a hole, a emptiness, a desire that only God can fill. Sin did that. The day I got born again is the day I stopped looking. All the drugs I used, all the stealing, everything that I did wrong was trying to fill that emptiness. What is it life? What is life? It's got to be more to life than getting high, stealing, fighting, all this stuff. And I asked that question at 16, 17. God showed me what was life. When he came into my life, I was, I used to get around people. You 20 years old and you acting like an old man. I've done everything. Nothing else to do. It's sunny. Won't you go on outside? I don't want to go out there. I've been out there. I'm good sitting up in the house. I have ran myself out. When you have tasted of everything out there that Satan was off and found out is tainted, why keep drinking from, the, from that fountain? You know it ain't no good. Why keep running back to it? I've been to that. I taste Jesus. They want no more of that. And we all say we done taste him, but what, what, when you, when, like I said, now that you're righteous, when you feel your, your lifeline is going back to the stank and it crimp your holes, crimp it, <laughs> and watch that old joker go down. <laughs> crimp the air, because if ain't no air, life getting to it, he, he came to resurface on you. <laughs> so my soul, listen, as the deer longingly, longingly for water, for the water brook, my soul pants longingly for you, O oh God. My soul, my life, my inner self thirsts for God, for the living God. When will I come and see the face of God? Amen. Psalm 63 and 1. Psalm 63 and 1. Psalm 63 and 1. Psalm 63 and 1. I'm almost a Psalm 63 and 1. It says, oh God, you are, uh, you are my God. With deepest longing I will seek you. You see what these verses are saying? They're lining up. My soul, my life, my very self thirst for you. My flesh longs and sigh. Boy, it sounds like you got some passion there. He burning for God. Uh-oh. Why do you think Jesus, that, that movie, The Passion of Christ, is called Passion? It was this man in, in seminary school, true story. He saw this lady he was in love with. He got up every morning, found out the lady go swimming on campus in the pool. He didn't swim. Every morning she got there in the pool. Passion will take you further because every morning he was in that pool when she got there. Long story short, they got married. The lady said he ain't been, been swimming. They've been married for years. They ain't been swimming yet. <laughs> what, what the passion was. He wanted that woman. She a godly woman. They got a godly marriage. But he saw something he wanted. Passion took him. You, you, you want God? What a passion. I, I wanted some fish the other week. I went and got it. I wanted some scrambles. I might eat bologna and Rick crackers. Whatever I get a day for, I'm going out. Why are you craving and won't go out? So God put an emptiness there, and we don't know it's God. But once God get in that spot, you're going to be satisfied. That's what I was looking for. Ain't no wife going to be able to satisfy. Ain't no husband going to be able to satisfy. Ain't no job going to be able to satisfy what God spot, that vacuum where he's supposed to be, that spot in his life. Nobody going to take that place. You can't put mama in that place. You can't put daddy you can't put your children, your job, your wife, your husband. Nothing belongs in that place. 
If you put somebody in there, watch what happens. God going to disrupt everything. He going to gonna flip the house upside down. He going to have order. Seek first the kingdom. Do you see this? My flesh long and signs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. You know that's crazy. You know that's some craving. Revelation 22. Revelation 22 and 17. Revelation 22 and 17. Write down Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, what, uh, Revelations 22 and 17. All right, the Holy Spirit and the bride, the church, believers say, come. And let the ones who hear say, come. Let, let the one who hear come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes to take and drink the water of life without cost. Going to cost you something, but it ain't talking about money. It ain't talking about money. And people, first thing they think about, we're so conditioned on what it costs. It costs Jesus his life. What is going to cost you? Yours. All right. Deuteronomy 8 and 3. I could, why, why are you in Revelation? Excuse me. No, you there. That's all right. I got another one. 22, 21 and 6. We won't get that one. This is the last one. Deuteronomy 8 and 3. We're going to pull it up at 1. I'll read the 1. All right. Every commandment that I'm commanding you today, you shall be careful to do so that you may live and multiply, go in the land and possess the land which the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember always all the ways which the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness so that he might humble you and test you to know what was in your heart. Why don't God just take us to heaven? Because he's going to leave us down here to try us and test us to see what's in our spirit. And he knows. He just wants us to know. Well, I ain't bad at Jeremy. Jeremy ain't the standard. I ain't judging myself by myself. Christ is the standard. Amen. We got to stop that. Well, I'm better than sister. Listen. Listen. Listen to what he did. He, which your Lord, your God, led you these 40 years in the wilderness that he might humble you. There go humility. What's the first attitude? Be attitude? Humility. To know what was in your heart and mind, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Listen to what God did. Three. He humbled you and allowed you to be hungry. God allowed us to be hungry to see what we'll do and allowed you to be hungry and fed you with manna. Manna was a representation of who? Jesus. Was it not? What the children of Israel say? We tired of this manna. What they were saying? We tired of Jesus. <laughs> we tired of Jesus. Give us some quail. That's what they were saying. Jesus was the bread of heaven. Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem. What was Bethlehem name? House of bread. Ain't, wasn't it fitting where the bread need to be where the house was? Look at God. Everything got some symbolicness to it. Let's finish this. He humbled you and allowed you to be hungry and fed you with manna, a substance which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, so that he might make you to understand by personal experience, that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of, of the Lord. Listen, your clothing did not wear out on you, nor did your feet swell. Manna was low fat. <laughs> Manna was healthy, light wafer, crispy, had a honey taste. Nobody was obese in the when they When they grew up, the clothes grew with them. When their foot grew, the, the sandal grew with it. Now tell me God, amen. Nobody feet swole up on them. Wasn't nobody eating. They, was, they had a diet to keep them healthy. We want quail. What did God do? Rain that they desired quail over Jesus. Now quail a good bird. I'd have had plenty of it. It's good. But guess what? Guess what? They, God rained that quail in there, and they were rotting in their teeth. You can crave something so bad, and God gave it. He'll give you what you want. He'll give you what you want. Then when it start killing you, what you going to do? It'll make you cry for God. 
God knows what he's doing. So, let, let, let's see this. Therefore, know in your heart, be fully cognizant that the Lord your God disciplines and instructs you just as a man disciplines and instructs his son. That's it. We're going to stop here. So, I want you to stay hungry. How do we stay hungry for God? Looking under Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. What are you hungry for right now? Man, I want a, I want a big beautiful. They got one, buy one, get one for a dollar. I done had them. They all right. Man, I want a double stamps. They all right too. But it ain't better than Jesus. I want a big house on the lake. That ain't nothing wrong with that. But do you desire that more than doing the will of God? What do you desire the most? I want a family. First, build a relationship with God so you know how to raise your family. Why do we want a man or a woman who ain't hungry for God? If you want a man to love you, he can't. The love of God, Romans 5 and 5, been shedded abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Love is holy, so ain't no Holy Ghost there. He loves you. He going to do one of them things that the world do. He, that, that, that Valentine love. That ghetto fabulous love. It ain't number touchy feely. That's all he looking for. And once he fulfill those desires, he moving on to the next. That's what he know. But a godly man, if he's hungry for God, he's looking for a wife that's hungry. A man that finds a wife finds a good thing. So he's looking for somebody just as hungry as he is for God. We, we got to put our priorities back in place. Amen. Stay hungry. Like they said, stay woke. <laughs> the people that's hollering saying, stay woke, they sleep. <laughs> Remember this now. When Satan with no bad desire come up, crimp that hose up. See, he'll say, can't get through me. I got it crimped. Crimp that lifeline. Uh-oh. That's our message for tonight. Come here, boy. Come here. See, he want me to chase him. <laughs>